Welcome to the month of May. If you're following along with the Paleo Rewind 2021 videos as they come out, you've just come from Dinosaurs Will Always Be Awesome and Your Dinosaurs Are Wrongs videos for April. Make sure you go check out my introduction video for Paleo Rewind 2021 to get the scoop on how it works this year. Garfield Comes Home 11 to 5 million years ago during a stretch of time referred to as the late Miocene, a giant saber-toothed felid stalked through the jungles, forests, and plains of Africa and Eurasia. It's been given the name Machiridus, and over the 188 years since its description, plenty of species of similarly large saber-toothed fossils have been thrown into the Machiridus genus. May saw the publication of the description of another set of felid fossils from Idaho, which the authors identified as belonging to a North American species of the Machiridus. The new species was named Machiridus lahayishipu, that species name coming from the old Cayusi words lahayus for ancient and hupup for wildcat. The bones are relatively fragmentary, consisting only of some skull fragments, a partial funny bone, and an ankle bone. They were found some time ago and were sitting in the collections of the Idaho Museum of Natural History, before someone got the time to take a second gander and get to the bottom of what they were. These remains mean that giant Smilodon-like saber-toothed cats existed well before Smilodon itself and that they may have originated in North America before spreading to Eurasia and Africa, or giant saber-toothed cats independently evolved large body size and huge fangs across the continents. Madagascar has weird turtles too. Madagascar is currently home to some of the most unusual and ancient animals alive. It's been separated from mainland Africa since the time of the dinosaurs and has had unusual and ancient animals on its surface for just as long. New completely bizarre fossils found nowhere else are found here all the time. A brand new one was published in May as Sahonachilles melakavava. It's a bizarre suction-feeding side-necked turtle from the late Cretaceous. It's known from a single specimen that's basically the entire skeleton. Turtle shells are easy to fossilize due to their boxy shape and hard bony structure, but most of the time the rest of the skeleton falls out and erodes away before someone can get to unearthing the fossil. So this nearly complete turtle skeleton adds a lot of information as to what kind of turtle it was. The skull was deep and the jaws were structured in such a way that the only solid interpretation of their use was for suction feeding. That being the technique in which the animal opens its mouth super fast and sucks and the negative water pressure forces any prey items near the mouth to be engulfed lickety split. This is weird because this type of feeding technique is unknown in most turtles and has appeared only recently in some modern side neck turtles, the soft shells and the mata mata. Earlier relatives of this new turtle probably didn't have this adaptation, and then it convergently evolved while in isolation in Madagascar for sucking down freshwater creepy crawlies. Italian Mollusk Sucking Lizard Whales In 1993, a bone bed of giant ichthyosaurs were found in a quarry of middle Triassic aged rocks outside of the small town of Lombardy, Italy. It took about three years to prepare the multiple skeletons and describe them as Bisonosaurus lepterhynchus. They weren't the largest, but were still pretty big, with some up to 8 meters, 26 feet. They didn't have any dorsal fins or tail flippers like most ichthyosaurs, and were rather whale-like with a small skull tipped in a long, very thin, pointy snoot bristling with thin, pointy teeth. A new paper published in May added five new specimens to the genus. They revised the list of characteristics used to define Bisonosaurus. These new characteristics were found in another ichthyosaur, Mikadocephalus, and is therefore added into the Bisonosaurus group. Thanks to the preserved stomach contents and skull characteristics of close relatives, plus the skull characteristics and stomach content preserved in Bisonosaurus, the researchers hypothesized these guys were soft prey specialists. 
They had the long, pointy teeth usually used to puncture and hold on to small fish and cephalopods and had the hydrodynamic sword snout to do so. These guys were not apex predators. Tiny single-clawed desert runner was earliest nocturnal hunter. For most of the history of paleontology, the best way to look into the lives of extinct animals was the rare fossils which preserved bits of soft tissues or behaviors like footprints. As time has progressed, new technologies have provided researchers with a whole bunch of new ways to reanalyze old specimens and new specimens alike. Instead of just looking at the outside of fossils or destroying them to look inside, scientists can throw the sucker in an x-ray machine or CT scanner and get the good bits of the inside without cracking it open with a rock saw or hammer. Larry Whitmer and his lab specialize in looking inside bones, particularly skulls, to get a better understanding of the operations of many extinct organisms. Previous studies have looked at three-dimensionally preserved inner ears and found clear patterns between the inner ear and complex body movements, like flight. A new study published in May decided to look at inner ears and scleral rings to look for any patterns between these bones and nocturnality. Just FYI, scleral rings are a ring of bony squares that rest within the eyes of non-avian and avian dinosaurs for structural support. They analyzed the scans of multiple theropod dinosaurs, including a bunch of modern nocturnal dinosaurs, owls and nightbirds, as well as extinct dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus, Dromaeosaurus, Shivuya, and more. The Legina is an organ within the inner ear that helps to process incoming sound information. Nocturnal animals, like the barn owls they looked at, have very long Legina. In fact, owls have the longest Legina of any bird. They have good night vision, but can also hunt in complete darkness with just their hearing. Big eyes trend towards nocturnality, and big Leginas trend towards nocturnality too. The eyes of Tyrannosaurus and Dromaeosaurus were optimized for daytime vision, but they also had large Leginas for better than average hearing. This probably means they were alright at moving around at night, but were more likely to have been more active during the day. Shivuya, on the other hand, had a Legina the same size as the owls. They also had some of the largest pupils proportionally of any known avian or non-avian dinosaur. This means that not only could this little pointy-snouted, single-clawed, long-legged dinosaur hear incredibly well, but it could also see incredibly well. This is basically the first all-but-confirmed nocturnal non-avian dinosaur on record. Helicanemimus gets some attention. 1993 saw the discovery of the front half of the skeleton of an ostrich-like theropod dinosaur from early Cretaceous Spain. It was named Pelicanemimus a year later and is considered an early diverging member of the ostrich dinosaur family, with tiny little teeth in its long, pointy, pelican-like beak. Despite its importance to the understanding of Ornithomimosaurian evolution and its bizarre anatomy, the whole specimen was never rigorously described until now. A new paper thoroughly discusses each and every body part in detail. They found that it diverged early from the Ornithomimosauria, but forms a unique clade alongside Harpimimus shinshausaurus and the rest of the advanced Ornithomimosaurs, but excludes all other primitive forms. Deep Sea Mosasaurs? Yet another mosasaur was published this year. It goes by the name of Pluridens serpentis and comes from Maastrichtian aged rocks of the latest Cretaceous of Morocco. It was a big boy at about 8 meters 26 feet. Overall, it didn't differ that much in looks from most mosasaurs to the untrained eye. However, it did have much smaller eye sockets than most mosasaurs, which means it wasn't relying on eyesight as much. The jaws were lined with equally spaced sensi holes that may have allowed the beast to sense minute changes in water pressure to search for prey. From these characteristics and many more, the authors suggest it may have hunted in low light conditions by sensing its way around rather than just seeing. This new mosasaur also brings up the list of late Cretaceous Moroccan mosasaurs to 13. 
That means this place was positively teeming with mosasaurs that took to all sorts of ecological positions. Mosasaurs were not declining by the end of the Cretaceous. If that extinction hadn't occurred, they would have continued unabated. New Big Nose Horn Face a new centrosaurine ceratopsian was named Menificeratops celii from fossils uncovered all the way back in 1996. The fossils come from the Cretaceous rocks of the Menifi Formation of northwestern New Mexico. This makes it the oldest known member of the centrosaur lineage of the horned dinosaurs. The centrosaurs being the group with the generally smaller frills, bigger frill ornaments, bigger nose horns, and bigger noses. The critter is most closely related to the long-horned Nasutoceratops, the fragmentary Critendonceratops, and the Mexican Yewikauceratops. It likely would have had a deep schnoz, no nose horns, and had two short forward-pointing brow horns and a relatively boring, squared-off frill. Besides that, the rest of it probably looked relatively similar to Nasutoceratops. It is unusual for where and when its fossils were from, it being from the south of North America and the oldest known centrosaur, suggests these horned dinosaurs may have evolved down south and then spread to the north before becoming extinct in the south. Oldest Modern Mammal Trackway from the Middle of Nowhere, Wyoming a pair of researchers from Texas A&M Natural Resources Institute have described a 1,031-meter, 3,385-foot-long trackway from Paleocene, Wyoming. These tracks were laid down in what was once a brackish water lagoon by two species of large mammal. The largest tracks belong to what might be a five-toed pantodont, a group of mammals that were some of the first to take on large body sizes right after the non-avian dinosaurs got clocked by the asteroid. Some were like the ground sloths of recent times, others like trunkless tapers, and more were like nothing we have alive today. The smaller tracks were made by a four-toed mammal of unknown affinity. This is the largest accumulation of Paleocene mammal tracks in the world, and only the fourth of its kind. Two sets of mammal tracks from this time come from Canada and one from Norway. That's been the beginning of May for 2021. Lots of cool stuff. Next up is Spino Dude Reviews video for the next half of May with a bunch of other cool stuff like ancient whales, horses, and a new dinosaur. Link to the next video in the description and comment section below. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks goes to my elephant tier patrons, Thea Svensson, Staniforth Hopkins, Dinosaur, Chris Frampton, Biotaverse, Arda Bayer, and Christoph Hubbinger, as well as my Tyrannosaur patrons, Iron Bladesman, Henry Brennan, Danny Van Heck, and Dana Manchester.